What's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a very quick and easy to understand walkthrough of the Beast from Beyond main easter egg quest. You can complete the map and hopefully if you've done all the other previous maps you'll be able to unlock Director's Cut. Now this is going to be a pretty quick simple guide as the easter egg isn't actually that difficult but I would recommend you put on some really good Fate and Fortune cards to help you out as a boss fight can be a little bit tricky. Stuff like perhaps the uh, ammo card as well as hide and seek, maybe react animated, perk insured, definitely make sure that if you do go down, you've still got a fighting chance. Now this easter egg can be done completely in solo, but I would highly recommend that you do this in co-op if you have some friends, just as it is a lot easier and you can get stuff done a lot easier as there is more players. Now I've been making guides on easter eggs for years now and I have a guide up for every other single Infinite Warfare Zombies map and previous Call of Duty Zombies map, so if you guys find this useful and you need help with other maps, open the description, you'll find more guides and at times there'll be a video visual prompt on screen showing you guys to open the description for a little bit more explanation of a step. Now I'm going to be giving away a code for the Beast from Beyond on PlayStation 4 within this video so if you guys want to be in the chance of winning simply make sure you've dropped a like rating on this video, you leave a comment with your PSN ID and also make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Now, without any further ado let's kick things off. Now you're going to see some footage of this easter egg taken during director's cut, it doesn't change anything apart from having perma perks as well as having some points to use straight off the bat. All these steps can be achieved exactly as per usual and the main focus we want to do first of all within the game is we want to get the power on which involves opening up the map and getting Neil's head from this main room by dropping down to where Tough Nuff is, picking up Neil's head, taking it back to spawn and placing it in and then we can start off this easter egg quest. Now we're going to be getting four floppy disks and these can be gotten in any order and you don't necessarily need to do stuff straight away in order to start getting these but we're going to first work on getting one of these which involves getting the entangler gun so in order to do this you're going to want to do the first two steps of ghosts and skulls and to activate this first skull right here you're going to be looking for an electrical box which is going to be in one of three spawn locations it can be in this area with the water room where there's a trap it'll be a box on the ceiling you want to throw a grenade the box will open and a skull will pop out if there isn't a box there then there's a good chance that the box could be in this cargo room Room here you want to go down the stairs look up and cook a grenade and if the box is there it will open the skull will be there and if it's not there the last location is going to be in this main room above the bomb stoppers perk machine you want to look slightly up and left throw a grenade on this box and boom the skull will be there you shoot that that will be the first skull obtained now for the second skull all players in the game need to go to this cargo room and there's going to be a certain amount of X's on the ground that all players will need to be stood on at the same time you can see me standing on right here. It's this very tiny X and you can see I'm looking around at my friends that are also stood in the positions needed for this to work and all players need to be stood on an X for this step to work and you'll notice a small little green area underneath you. This is a very small area which you'll need to be stood in and you can't leave this section. You basically have to stand still mostly. Zombies can push you and they can push you to the point where you're nearly pushed out but not quite or they can push you and if you get pushed out then you will have failed the step and you'll need to go to another round but essentially by having all players stood in this section you notice in the middle on the bottom floor a skull will start rising you're going to basically want to be killing zombies and standing still until this bit is complete and then the skull will appear somewhere in the room and you'll have a very short amount of time to run and jump into it for you to get the second skull and by doing that you'll unlock the entangler weapon which is going to be on the ground pick this up as going to be needing it to get two card keys or floppy disks so once you've got this entangler weapon we can go ahead and start with one of the first key cards you can get and you want to entangle the floppy disk behind the bars here in this red lit hallway near bang bangs you want to be simply entangling it and shooting it towards the grate in the back once you've done this you'll know as it's flown out and it will be in a section of vents in the map it could be right to this vent just to the left of the mystery wheel here it can be upstairs by this vent here just by the door towards bang bangs it can be in the med bay section just by the spawn in this vent here or it could literally be inside the spawn itself just by this magic wheel location on the ground there. Now there could be other locations around the map. A lot of people have said that it could be any vent around the map so I will update the description with detailed descriptions of every single location but that's the ones we've found so far. The next one you want to be getting with the entangler weapon is you want to entangle a helmet around the map and you want to be carrying this 
this until you get to this section here where you can see this cryptid that is being uh that's like sort of got his carcass there on the bed you want to entangle a helmet and you want to chuck it towards this green monitor which will break the force field and allow you to go inside and there'll be a floppy disk there now we need two more floppy disks and the first one we can get is simply by opening and navigating to pack a punch which is by getting three satellite sort of plate pieces around the map that you'll lay as a bridge to get yourself to pack a punch if you don't know how to do that i've got a tutorial for you guys on my channel and then once you've got that you simply want to enter the pack a punch and then leave and then once you've done that you'll notice a blue cryptid will spawn somewhere around the map and when that's killed it will drop a floppy disk and the final floppy disk is going to be around the pack a punch it's going to be on the ground to the left of the pack a punch portal now i'll go through this step quite slowly and explain it very very in depth because you might be a little bit confused at first but trust me this is fine if you have capture card devices this will really help out for your team in communicating but essentially you want every single person to be holding a different floppy disk and you want to either describe the icon that you have or simply take a screenshot of the floppy disk icon you have because you're going to be needing this okay so once you have that you're going to want to go around the map and need to locate a paper scrap around the map which has all four symbols that you guys have on your floppy disks so one of these locations can be a piece of paper which is going to be up a ladder to the left in spawn there's also a table in the break room to the right of the freezer trap which is has a two scrap pieces of paper ripped in half so going from left to right the first scrap on the left matches with the third scrap paper and the second scrap of paper matches with the fourth there can also be a post-it note actually two of them on this computer monitor in the main room which is going to be above bomb stoppers so there's going to be two post-it notes that can also be one right there and finally there can be one more which is going to be left of the magic wheel in spawn up on this wall so what you want to be doing is you want to be looking at all four symbols that you guys have for each of the floppy disks of course four floppy disks means four symbols and we want to look around the map and find the paper scrap which has all four of those symbols you want to be finding a scrap which contains every symbol which you guys have on each of your floppy disks and the way this works is you're reading this from top to bottom so if you're looking on a scrap of paper and you see the symbols say for instance you have one uh, that's right at the top that's going to indicate slot number one and that's the way it follows as it goes from top to bottom that's how it relates to slot one to four and i have an image on screen to show you guys a little bit more of what i've explained so i've got screenshots of all four key cards that we had in the game then i'm going to show you a screenshot of the scrap of paper which it matches and to show you how this works and how you input it so by looking at the symbols that we have on these key cards and then the scrap paper but you can see this scrap paper can contains all four of these key card symbols so going from top to bottom we're going to match these up and label them as one two three and four as these are the slots that will go into neil in slot one two three and four once you've popped these in if you've done this correctly neil will become angry and you'll start activating traps and doors located around the map if you get this wrong you'll have a few cryptid spawn and the key cards will now have different symbols so you're going to need to find a different scrap of paper to match and then input these in the right sequence but again if you guys have any trouble open the description I'll be able to describe that a little bit better for you in a written tutorial if you guys don't get it now once you've managed to do that and neil is angry and traps and doors are going to be starting to open and activate you want to get the entangler and you want to go to the theater and you want to go towards this brute cutout and there'll be a button just outside the map that you want to entangle on the wall behind you want to carry this button to the afterlife arcade and there's going to be this beast from beyond poster that you want to drag this button to if done correctly the button will teleport and no longer be on on the original wall you'll see it just kind of be swallowed by the poster if it doesn't work which it is a little bit buggy just go back to the button entangle it again and drag it back into the poster once that's done you will now want to go to the uh, force field room near the med bay and near the bottom side of this desk you'll notice that there is a button you want to activate this button and just outside in this weird cryptid area room you'll notice that a 4x4 grid of dials have now appeared now this is a very simple puzzle and if you get this wrong then it'll be very easy for you to correct so what you want to do is you want to take a screenshot of what the levers look like right now in this puzzle you want to note down the initial orientation of these levers all you need to do right now is looking at your image you must turn each of the dials that were initially vertical 
into horizontal. So by doing that, you should eventually, by following the image that you took the screenshot of and switching all the levers you saw in that image from vertical to horizontal, you should do this to the point where you'll get a pop-up saying that you've successfully hacked Neil. If this doesn't work, change every lever that you changed from vertical to horizontal back to vertical and then change all the horizontal levers to vertical. And if that doesn't work and you've completely messed it up, keep going, switching all the ones that are vertical to horizontal or horizontal to vertical, and eventually you will get this. It's very, very easy, and it might take quite a little bit of trial and error if you mess it up, but you will eventually get this. Once you have successfully done that, Neil will be temporarily hacked, and you're now on a timer to go to spawn and use the entanglement weapon on his head, and you want to take it to the Pack-A-Punch room and place his head on the computer on a desk. Uh, there's going to be quite a few zombies chasing you, so... So if you're doing this in co-op, it'd be best to have people escorting you as that will really help you out. But once Neil's head's dropped, then you will be good to go. If a if you fail or the Neil head's dropped, a nuke will go off, ending the round, and you'll need to repeat the puzzle step with the levers in order to hack Neil's head and to untangle it again. But once Neil's head's in the computer, you now want to set up. You want to be getting your perks, you want to be getting good weapons, you want to be pack-a-punching and double pack-a-punching. I recommend you guys take in the Mauler if you can get it out of the Mystery Wheel. The FHR-40 also does really good damage, as well as the VPR. And also, if you can get the Venom X or the Y, that will come in quite nicely. But the Kendall 44 pistols are great as well. There's loads of cryptos in this boss fight they are going to be needing to take out. So now, when every player is ready, head in the Pack-A-Punch machine, hold activate on the computer, and you'll enter the boss fight. You'll be in this small section, and you'll initially be killing rhinos that are released out of the containers by the laser. And once the last container is opened, you have access to an arena with portals, which will spawn waves of cryptos. You want to kill the entire wave of cryptids till the uh, portals disappear and then you're going to start getting blue cryptids and then you're going to be getting rhinos. You're going to be want to be taking all of these guys out and what's going to happen is depending on how many players there are in the game, there's going to be a number of terminals, computers which are going to be activated and you're all going to need to activate these in a very quick succession of time. They don't need to be at the exact same time, but they need to be in quick succession of each other. They need to be activated. If you don't get these right, you can just keep going until you do and eventually you'll notice a computer panel will have been uh, uh, now available for you to see inside of that initial square spawning section and there'll be a timer that counts down from 100 seconds so you need to survive for 100 seconds with this onslaught of cryptids until that runs out the, the sort of room will go dark and you'll have two blue rhinos which will spawn in these are exceptionally powerful and bullet spongy heavy rhinos and i think the way that you do this is you need to shoot them in the back so having players train them around shooting in the back it will take a long time and you will have cryptids eventually spawn in during this step as well so be very very careful on that front but eventually you'll be able to take these guys down now these guys do leave these blue flames on the ground and if you walk into them you will be insta dead pretty much as these are really lethal there's also a ammo crate inside that initial square spawn as well so if you guys are running low on ammo simply walk up to the crate and wait a few seconds and you'll have your ammo refilled it will take a while but eventually you will take out these rhinos and you will have completed this easter egg boss fight which is awesome now if you do go down there is a lost and found in there and there are some perks as well so you will be able to recover quite nicely but just make sure that your team stays alive whilst that's happening. And there you go. You finish the Beast from Beyond Easter Egg. You hopefully will have Director's Cut if you've done every single other Easter Egg in the game. And then you can go ahead and do the Super Easter Egg by completing all of the Talisman quests inside of each of the main maps. And then that Super Easter Egg boss fight by completing Beast from Beyond again. And if you want to see that, again, all that stuff is here on the channel for your viewing pleasure. But it's a very easy to simple Easter Egg. There's not really that much to it. You don't need to do the Venom X quest whatsoever. If if you feel like it might be helpful for taking out cryptids by all means go ahead and do that but there we go my friends if you enjoyed the video you found it useful make sure to smash that thumbs up button down below leave me your thoughts in the comments and hit that subscribe as well so you don't miss out and i'll catch you next time